Welcome to day two of the second week. This is our fifth, if you're keeping count, winter camp session. Uh, my name is Sheik. I am your winter camp counselor, and I'm so happy you're able to join us. If you're joining us live Tuesday at 11 a.m., beautiful. If not, if you're binge watching these and just checking out what we have to offer, so glad you were able to join us and check out some of the things that we do during our winter camp and what we'll be doing for our summer camp as well, because these are kind of similar here. So today, if you are watching this live, we are preparing for a visit with the Pittsburgh Zoo, which is going to be really, really awesome. And we're going to check out a few uh, animals, see what they're doing with their winter break. But if you want to go back and review some of our previous lessons, how to make pom-pom garland, how to make a snow globe with materials just around your house, the Pittsburgh Ballet doing the Nutcracker, how to make stained glass art, go right ahead. The links are right below. But without further ado, we're going to turn it over to the Pittsburgh Zoo and see how uh, some animals are spending their winter break. Hi, everybody. So my name is Beth Inches, and I am the Senior Education Specialist for Animal Care here at the Pittsburgh Zoo and PPG Aquarium. I've actually been here at the zoo for 20 years this year, and so that's quite a long time. And I got to know a lot of the animals here, which are absolutely amazing, and kind of including our little friend Hartley here. So Hartley is an African fennec fox. So fennec foxes are found in the North, uh, North Africa in the deserts, and they are very fast little animals. They've got really quick little feet that they can be able to run around with. And their feet are really important, not just for running, but for another reason. You know, think about the desert. It would be very, very hot and very dry. The African desert is one of the hottest places on earth. And so to help them on that hot sand, they actually have special feet. If you look at the bottom of their feet here, They've got little fur covering all their, their pads. They have pads just like a dog would have. And that fur covers those pads so that that way when they run, it's like having built-in flip-flops on their feet. Now the fennec fox is really, really fast, as I said, and that's so that they can catch their food. Their food can be anything from rodents and cactuses and bugs, but their, one of their favorites is actually scorpions. These guys are so fast, they can snap the tail off a scorpion before it has a chance to sting them. Now Hartley here is almost 10 years old, and that's pretty old for a fennec fox. Their lifespan is usually around eight or nine years old. And so he's, he's definitely an older little guy here, but he's actually pretty lucky to be here because he's been a father since he's been here. And so he lives here with his son, Dash. He's actually had three kids. Their names are Jet, Bolt, and Dash. And Dash lives here at the Pittsburgh Zoo and his brothers have moved on to another zoo. But fennec foxes are great parents. So when they're born, the fox little kits are actually in the den with mom. And so it's dad's job to go get all the food for them. And so he has to run out and hunt for not just himself, but for mom and all the little kits. And so he has to grab it, bring it back to the den. And whenever he's hunting, he makes sure that the family eats first and he eats last. And so when his little kits were born here, Hartley would come out every day, grab all kinds of food for them and take it back into the den so that the mom could actually be able to eat. And then he would be the last one to eat. Now foxes have these amazing ears and fennec foxes ears are enormous. Remember I said the African desert is one of the hottest places on earth. You know, when they run around, it's mostly at nighttime, which can actually get very cold, but sometimes it is still gonna be pretty warm. And so these giant ears that he has are actually meant to help him cool himself. And so there's big blood vessels in the backs of his ears that actually help him to stay nice and cool then. And what it does, it lets all the extra body heat out of his ears so that that way he can stay nice and comfortable. Now if you look, he also has this nice little nose. It's a very long little nose to help him get a good sense of smell. And he has very sharp little teeth in there too. Those teeth are great for crushing through bug shells, through small animals, and even through cacti or plants. And so he can find any roots, any kind of plants he find as well. Now another great thing about them, you can see their beautiful fur coat. He's got all kinds of cool camouflage here to be able to hide in his environment. And that's gonna help him especially since he's gonna be running around at nighttime. And so, as I said, during the daytime, it gets very hot, but at nighttime, it can drop to be very, very cold. It can drop to the 40s or the 50s. So compare that during the daytime temperature, which can be over 100 degrees, he's gotta stay nice and comfortable. And so he's got ears to help him if it gets too hot, but he's got a fur coat in case it gets too cold to help make sure that he stays nice and comfortable. Now they are nocturnal. So during the daytime, he's gonna hide underground in a burrow. And so that's where, like I said, if they had kits, the mom would stay underground in the burrow with the kits. But when they, even when they don't have kits, they would hide underground underneath rocks or underneath the burrow to be able to stay nice and safe from predators. Do you have any questions about him? Is his coat soft or rough? 
That's a great question. So he is very, very soft. He's nice and soft and fluffy. And as a matter of fact, Hartley is not always the best at grooming himself. And so he is going to be able to um, lick or kind of groom at his fur. But it is a very, very soft coat. Now, as I said before, these guys are um, kind of like pads, like a dog on their feet. They're actually members of the dog family. And the fennec fox is considered the smallest member of the fox family and one of the smallest members of the dog family. So they're pretty tiny little animal here. But they are very fast. They actually have a fast nickname. Their nickname is the ghost fox because they can just dig through the sand and it looks like they're just disappearing right through the sand then. Well, he's like, I want to run now. What are their populations like? Are they endangered or are they okay? So right now, researchers are still trying to get an idea of just how many there are. Where they live is pretty hot and pretty remote. And so they're still trying to study how many there are. They believe that right now that their populations are okay, but they're not 100% certain. And so they're definitely trying to check that out. Hi, everyone. So now we have a very special animal. This is Lucy. And Lucy is a southern three-banded armadillo. So the three-banded armadillo gets its name because it has these three bands on its back. Now there are different types of armadillos out there. There's everything from the nine-banded armadillo here in the U.S., which has nine bands, to a six-banded armadillo, a pink armadillo, a giant armadillo, and even a screaming hairy armadillo. So there's different types of armadillos out there. So the three-banded armadillo would come from Central and South America. Lucy's what's called a, a, a southern three-banded armadillo, so she'd be found down in South America then. And you can see she's got this beautiful coloring. This is gonna help her to hide in her favorite habitat, which is actually grasslands. And so they would live in grasslands and dry forests of South America. And there they're gonna look for their favorite food, which is actually bugs. So armadillos are in the same family as sloths and anteaters. And so she doesn't have a mouth quite like an anteater, but you can see it's kind of long and narrow mouth. And so she'd use that to help her find her bugs. And so she's got an amazing sense of smell. That nice long nose is gonna help her to find her food. She also, has excellent hearing. They have fantastic hearing so they can listen for the bugs underground. And then if you look at those big claws, those claws actually act like shovels. So she can use those to dig to get down to the bugs and be able to eat them. Now, Lucy here is an amazing nocturnal animal. And so she runs around at nighttime. And so during the daytime, she's gonna hide in a little burrow. She doesn't usually dig her own burrow. She actually tries to look for old ant ear burrows and she's gonna sleep inside of there. Now, besides bugs, they will also eat fruits and vegetables, and they will eat leaves, but bugs are definitely their favorite food. Stop for one second. Let me get this. You're if you kicking a lot today, miss. Recenter. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Now, if you take a look at her here, she's got, um, as a mammal, she does have hair on her body, but instead of being on her back like the fennec fox, her hair is actually coming out from her underside. So those little skirt hairs are going to help her to kind of brush the dirt out of her way and to help keep it out of her shell. It's also going to make it harder for things to get up inside of her shell. But she does have a shell, so if she's nervous or scared, she feels like a predator is trying to grab her, what she would do is actually curl up into a ball. So she can tuck into that ball so well that her head and her tail actually fit together. And she could squish her legs in there, so that all you would see of her, it would just kind of look like a little cantaloupe. That's all it would look like. And so she's going to be um, very well protected from that. Now, as I said, they come from South America, and so she would have to watch out for some animals like jaguars or snakes or even birds of prey, but her biggest predator in the wild is actually people. These guys are considered a threatened animal because their numbers are dropping. Unfortunately, they have to watch out for, uh, you know, what's called the bushmeat trade where people might try to hunt for them and end up eating them. And so they do have to watch for that, but they do have other predators as well. They'd also have to watch out for habitat loss. These guys do like their territory. And so, you know, when they lose their habitat, unfortunately, they wouldn't have that anymore. And so they'll watch out for people then. Now, Lucy here is about 10 or 12 years old. We're not exactly sure how, Lucy, how old Lucy is, but she did come in here from another facility and she's gonna stay here for the rest of her life. And so we're hoping Miss Lucy here will live to be somewhere around 15 to 20 years old. Tell me about Lucy's ears. So Lucy does have these little ears. They have an amazing sense of hearing. And so they can hear for bugs that are digging around underneath the ground. Whenever she's frightened, her ears can actually pop underneath of this little head plate. And part of this all rolls inside of that ball so it protects herself. But whenever she's out and running around, she can stick those ears out to listen. Now she has very special teeth inside of her mouth too. So she only has eight peg teeth. So these little teeth are just little round flat teeth and they're used just for crushing those little bug shells. And so they can just kind of crunch them up there. 
You can see her little uh, feet here that she's kicking around. They have almost like a hoof on the back foot if you look at her little back feet. She's got one toenail that likes to grow upwards a little bit. But otherwise, you can see her feet kind of overlap, so her nails actually grow over top of each other. Do armadillos have live babies or do they um, have babies and eggs? That's a great question. So the armadillo has live babies, just like a person would have. And so when her baby is born, it's about the size of a golf ball, but it looks just like her. And it has a very soft shell that will harden up as it dries out. And so she'll um, be able to protect herself and her babies for a little while, usually by hiding. And then eventually when the baby gets bigger and tougher, that shell will give it protection too. Um, this time I brought a really interesting friend. This is Sheldon. And Sheldon is a Holmes hingeback tortoise. So Holmes hingeback tortoises do come from Africa and can be found usually in Central Africa. Yeah, they're called a hingeback tortoise because this is his shell here, but he actually has little hinges on the back of his shell. So what that does, it lets this part of his shell move. So if he was scared, he would tuck his feet and his legs in, but this part of his shell could actually move and lower down over top of those back feet, so it would give him protection. Now the front feet, he's actually gonna tuck these legs in over his face, and that would give him lots of protection that way. Now the shell is attached to him. Turtles are part of their shells. So if everybody feels their backbone that you have, that backbone, he has one just like it. His runs right here through the center of his shell. You can see this nice line right here. And so it runs right through that shell, which is why he's attached to his shell. He can never, ever leave it. So if you ever wonder why turtles move so slow, think about how fast would you move if you put your house on your back. And so probably not very fast if you could really even lift it up. But that shell is going to offer him a lot of protection. It is made out of bony plates. So you can see all these little kind of individual circles here. These are each part of that plate, and he will have to shed those off. Those are called his scoots and those scoots would have to shed off as he grows. Now turtles are born with their shells and they're their, their entire life. So they can never get a new one. They always keep the same shell. Now, another thing that's really amazing about turtles, if you look, you can see his mouth there. So turtles don't have any teeth. What they have, it's a hard bony jaw called a beak, just like a bird's beak. And so they're gonna use that to be able to mash up their food. Now his favorite food is plants. And so he would look for grasses and for leaves and for fruits out in Central Africa. And so those are going to be his favorite fruits, the favorite foods there that he might try to find. But all he has is just that jaw to kind of crush it down and break it up so that he can eat that. Now Sheldon here is about 16 years old, but they can live to be much, much older. So a hingeback tortoise like Sheldon could actually live to be somewhere around 50 to almost 70 years old. Turtles can live a very long time. <coughs> now, if you look at him here, he's got these great feet. And these feet are part of what make him a, tor tor oh, sorry, a tortoise. So turtles usually are found in and around the water. Tortoises are found up on land. And you can see he has this kind of nice round, half round foot here. So tortoises have either a round or a half round foot. Whereas turtles usually have either flippers or they have webbed feet. The exception is kind of the box turtle, which has more of a toe that it can use to hang onto muddy banks. But then they also... It's partly their diet. <coughs> so turtles tend to be more what's called an omnivore. So they eat more plants and meat. Whereas tortoises tend to be more herbivores. So they rely more on grasses and fruits and vegetables and leaves, all kinds of plant material. And so this guy is definitely a tortoise. Now he loves it where it's nice and hot. You can see this nice color that he has. It's gonna help him to blend in kind of down on the ground. So he's not gonna really be able to climb much now, you might notice this time of year, it starts getting colder and you really don't start seeing reptiles outside anymore. So we won't see any more snakes, any more lizards, or even turtles. And around Pennsylvania, we've got some amazing turtles here, but what do they do in the winter time? Well, what they do is actually something called broomate. So that means that in the winter time, it's kind of like a hibernation. And so they're gonna go somewhere that's gonna stay a little bit warm. So they usually either go underground or they'll bury underneath like rotting logs or leaf piles and they're gonna just go to sleep and they just hang out for the entire winter about that. And that's how they protect themselves through the winter time. Remember reptiles are cold blooded or another fancy word for it is called ectothermic. And so that's how they protect themselves in the winter time when it's really cold then is by brumating. And so like snakes, some snakes will go deep underground to be able to stay safe and they'll get kind of in a big colony. Turtles, they'll do the same thing. They'll crawl under little burrows or they'll try to bury themselves underneath of mud or, or just dirt. That way they can stay nice and safe then. But that's why we don't really see any reptiles in the wintertime is because they're all brumating. 
So think of it just like hibernating. Now this type of turtle here, here your tortoise, he does not hibernate because where he lives actually stays warm all year round. Now, as I said, he comes from Central Africa and where he lives, they're unfortunately considered a critically endangered species. These guys are disappearing very fast. And unfortunately, partly it's because of the pet trade and partly because of habitat loss. Now, when we talk about the pet trade, people do collect animals sometimes and try to take them home and keep them as a pet. Now, we don't think that Sheldon was collected from the wild, but we're not exactly sure how he became somebody's pet here in the United States. And that's actually how we got him. He was somebody's pet and they decided he was too tough to take care of. Turtles are not easy to take care of. They have, they're kind of needy. They need lots of fresh fruits and vegetables. They need special lights to be able to be completely healthy. And so they called us up and said, could we take him? And we said, we'd happily bring him in here. And that's how we got Sheldon here at the zoo. Now, if you remember that tarantula that you saw, she was also a pet that was donated. And so some of the animals at the zoo actually came to us just because people had them in their homes and couldn't take care of them. So you guys ever take a pet home? You want to know everything you can about it before you ever bring it into your house. That way you know you can take care of it because we only have so much room and so there might only be so many places that those animals could go then. Well, thanks everybody for hanging out with us at the Zoo today and I hope you have a great day.